Hi everybody, my name is DK Green. <laughs> Mr. DK Green. Um, right, I've, I've disclosed on, on the board uh, you know, who I am because I think it'll give you a better perspective on, on where I'm coming from, what my perspective is. Um, BDSM is my particular uh, expertise, if you like. Um, it's not the only thing I've spoken at for pink therapy, but it's, it's my thing. Um, so here we're talking about the intersectionality of BDSM and bisexuality. When I was first given that title, oh yeah, you can do the BDSM and bisexuality, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what? So I really had to go away and do some thinking about it, and what are the intersections, because I deal with bi bisexual clients and BDSM clients. Um, but even I hadn't really truly looked into and unpicked the intersectionality between that particular intersectionality. So here we go. Um, you've all no doubt read this in the programme already, but I'm afraid you're going to have to hear it again. So, when a client has an interest in BDSM kink, whilst also defining or presenting as bisexual, it can potentially provide complex challenges in exploring this particular intersectionality. Are there issues to work with therapeutically around one or other or both of these aspects of their sexuality? Within the complex and multifaceted faceted world of BDSM and kink, there are myriad and varied fascinating ways in which bisexuality and gender choices can and do come into play, sometimes quite literally. During this segment, we'll be taking a look at where BDSM and bi intersect, exploring gendered preferences and choices in terms of dominance and submission, topping and bottoming, relationships, play and gendered boundaries. Okay, so a very brief overview, and this really is a potluck. It's probably not in this order. Um, the intersectionalities I'm particularly looking at and interested in are bisexuality and kink, gendered preferences, role play, which is really important as far as BDSM is concerned, um, gender and sexuality as mutable. Um, what I mean by that is a lot of the um, talks that you've heard today have talked about a certain sense of fluidity. It's not always the case. And we had an interesting brief side discussion earlier about um, people. Actually, there are therapeutic approaches um, and models for therapy with GSD clients. Lesbian, gay, etc., etc., and bi, trans. Um, those models all come to the conclusion of the end result of your therapy is supposed to be a complete acceptance and understanding of your sexuality. Bingo, you won, you succeeded, successful therapy. The bi bisexual one is the only one that ends with essentially unstable. <laughs> That's the model we're giving as psychotherapists studying that you're, you're supposed to just accept the fact that with a bisexual client at the end of that model the, the most you can deal with is the most you can achieve is that they're actually unstable in their sexuality which is I think as everyone in the room realizes is complete and utter not true. Um, whew, nearly slipped. Um, so bottom line is people whose bisexual identity are very fixed. That is their identity. It may be fluid from day to day, but that is their, that's what they choose to be identified with. I am, I practice bisexuality. Yeah? Um, that's an interesting little wordplay as well. I am bisexual. I struggle with that on the level of, um, I am fat. Actually, no, I have fat. I'm not fat, that's not who I am. Um, so for me, it's the same. I, I enjoy bisexuality. I am not bisexual because, you know, whatever. Anyway, you get the idea. Wordplay. Issues to consider. Um, the client's well-being, society and community, mental health, exploring sexualities, shame and guilt, consent and boundaries. Um, this might look for anyone who was here last year and saw um, my, my Pink Therapy talk on BDSM then. Um, some of this might be a little bit familiar. Right, so intersectionality. First, first slide we've got. Bisexual relevance and kink relevance. I thought this was a really interesting um, thought process, so I wanted to try and put it up for you guys to see if you could follow. Bisexual people are just as likely and or unlikely to be interested or involved in BDSM kink as any other sexual identity. The factors of being bisexual and being kinky may or may not have anything to do with each other. Bottom line is, what does the client feel about the relevance of these aspects of their sexuality to each other in themselves? Kink relevance, deja vu. Kinky people are just as likely and or unlikely to be bisexual as non-kinky people. So in the same way that a person's sexuality and their gender are two very different things, uh, does everybody know what I mean by that? I'm hoping so, good. Um, both being a part of the whole person, but independent and separate, kink and bisexuality can happily coexist and are not mutually exclusive 
or inclusive. In other words, you don't need to be bi to be kinky or vice versa. Yeah. However, bottom line, the client's self-defined sense of self-identity belongs to them and often will be long and hard fought and won. You will have clients come to you who are questioning and exploring that sexuality. You know, your job is to hear them and, and feel them and, and help them, hold their hand while they figure it out. Yeah? Um, it's not to come with a preconceived set of bisexuality is. It's, it's to come with a, a, what is bisexuality for this person, for this client? What does that mean to them? Okay, so an open, exploratory, overarching and non-judgmental acceptance, what a long word, lot of long words, of that self-definition on the part of the therapist is what matters. Okay? <laughs> Further, intersectionality is gendered preferences for different kinds of sex or play. The more I got to thinking about this topic, the intersections of bisexual and um, kink, the more that kept coming up. Um, people for whom the gender of a partner isn't a significant factor in regard to play which may or may not reflect on their self-identity. E.g., women who will only have sex with men, but will play with women. Men who will only have sex with women, but will play with men, etc. Heteroflexible is a great word for, for bisexuality in play, um, because you're talking about bisexuality as a practice rather than a sense of identity in there. A heterosexual male serving a gay master or a homoflexible gay male serving a cisgendered mistress. Perhaps the only dominance in his hood might be women. So it's, it's bisexuality as a, a doing rather than a being. Yeah? Other instances within kink where gender preferences outside of the client's usual self-determined sexuality may occur. Dominance and submission. A woman may feel that she can only be submissive to men uh, and dominant to women. Um, Within topping, these are just examples, by the way. There are myriad combinations of this. Topping and bottoming. A man may be happy to top men, but only submit to women. His particular kink might be female supremacy. Role play. See over. Okay. People for whom actively and flexibly playing with gender is a contributing factor. Now, when you're in a room full of people who have fought long and hard to figure out their gender, the word playing can feel sometimes diminishing. In BDSM, more often than not, it's not. Because um, play is the juicy fun, which is why most people are there. Okay? So, for example, forced feminiz feminization of men, e.g. cisification made role play. The forced is obviously tongue-in-cheek, it's 100% consensual, it's somebody whose kink is in feeling forced to submit by doing something that would be theoretically against their desire. Of course, anyone who's coming in and asking you to force them into certification is actually wanting to be certified and, and being turned on by that. Okay? Um, so it may include consensual humiliation play or consensual strong dominance and submission roles, hence what I was talking about on the previous slide, female supremacy or patriarchal power play. So these may be concepts that in real life, out there in the world, um, they're particularly feminist and, and don't want, you know, patriarchal power play would be insulting and derogatory and diminutive. However, within BDSM play, it's something tasty to play with. Um, the forbidden, the taboo, in the same way that some um, uh, BDSM players will play with race, will play with, um, you know, Nazi fetish wear, things like that. Things that in reality, in their intellectual mind, they know is, pardon the expression, up and wrong. However, in sex and kink and play, it is something that they want to play with because of, precisely because it's so taboo. Okay? So age play is another area that you, you might find the intersectionality here. And we're talking at the moment about the gender because that has the relevance on the bisexuality. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? Not terribly well worded, but I'm hoping you're following me. So in age play, the inner child might feel differently gendered. Yeah? So you may be um, a grown presenting woman who's age playing and actually finds it's a little boy. They want to be a little boy instead. Yeah. Um, or an adult, usually butch, a masculine woman enjoying age play might suddenly decide they want to wear pink rims in their hair. Yeah, It's about that fluidity of gender within play, within the safe, hopefully pre-negotiated, consented play. Okay? Um, butch daddies, boys, boys. Um, this is a, quite a large part of the um, lesbian community. 
Um, so I've put a note in there, this can be intrinsically felt and identifying with. Again, recognising that the term playing with gender may actually rankle some people who fought bloody hard to find their gender identity. So rather than playing, they might actually be adopting that role because it actually fits with their chosen gender or their preferred feeling of gender. Okay? Um, also including lots of female sir roles. Um, So-called forced by i.e.g. heterosexual identified men being uh, made to, pardon the language, sock cock, or be penetrated. Heteroflexible is one of those words that's really useful here, um, etc. Heterosexual identified women enjoying being ordered to have sex with another woman. So it might be a place within a BDSM play that they can explore by fantasies, by being told to do it. And it's kind of like the, um, uh, the, 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 trope of bored married housewife tied up with hubby's ties because that way I have to submit because I have no control. Yeah, but do use the right ties, hubby. <laughs> anyway, um, so a lot of this is around play as a good term, a positive term, a BDSM term, not as in playing with as in you're not real or you're not serious or you're not legitimate in your identity. I really want to make you, help you to understand that difference. Um, last thing I want is to offend anyone. Hello. Okay. I've had those assumptions made about myself. People actively exploring gender in sexual scenes. Gender fucking. It's a very lovely and delicious phrase, and I will use the F word for that because gender fucking is something that people really enjoy playing with in the BDSM scene. Um, switching from male to female or vice versa. Indeed, or animal, or alien, or whatever. Okay. Pirates are. <laughs> Um, issues to consider. Now, the slides that I've made for this presentation are not going to take 20 minutes. Um, although, hanging, we're, we're pushing it a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, issues to consider. These are the bigger questions. I, I needed to set the backdrop. 20 minutes is not a lot of time. So, I'm hope I'm going to leave this one up afterwards for Q&A um, because I think an, uh, an awful lot of those issues are, are issues... Uh, I could have written it better, to be frank, because there are lots more. Um, but I did needed tiny text and you wouldn't have been able to see it. Um, but these are some of the issues that you may wish to bring. The bottom line is, what does the client bring? What are they showing you? Are they showing you that their issues are predominantly around the invisibilization of bisexuality? Or are they showing you that their issues are predominantly about um, guilt of sh and shame of being in, you know, um, a, a, such a taboo sexuality as, as BDSM? Yeah. Um, do they have issues around coming out or coming in, as was mentioned earlier, or not? Uh, those are the things that they are going to bring to you that you need to examine. Um, I think I'm going to go forward and come back because I think the important thing here... Oh, the bottom row is basically my, my session last year, which is mental health dealing with whether their play or their bisexuality is about... Um, catharsis or healing or pattern repeating or abuse results of or those are the things that as therapists we have to look at but we can also just assume that they know this within the world of BDSM and kink gender and sexuality is often a more mutable adaptable and malleable thing something that is often more flexibly played with than outside kink this leads to another layer of possible understanding around sexuality in terms of bisexuality flexibility active role play and submissive or forced um, sexuality play. So bisexuality, pansexuality, omnisexuality, heteroflexible, homoflexible and many, many others are all words familiar and explored within the worlds of kink and fetish, leather and BDSM. So within kink, sexuality can have an almost chameleon-like quality depending <coughs> on the person or the scene. Here's my bottom line. Trust the client because acceptance is often the therapist's greatest gift. So... In other words, there may well be issues to explore, as discussed, but these particular colourful and diverse sexual choices and identities might not be the issue. Thank you.